today we're going to go over four different types of digital SAT practice resources provided by our favorite company on earth, College Board. And even though College Board technically only gave us four practice exams to work with, and seriously, dude, like, what are we supposed to do with four practice exams, like not go to college? Well, the good news is that there are a lot more resources available, but most students are missing out on it. And by the end of this video, you're going to have access to over 60 plus practice exams. That's over 3000 official SAT questions. And if you can't get 700 plus after 3000 official practice questions, shoot me an email, I'll send you more. <laughs> and most importantly, if I were to go back to high school with what I figured out as a SAT math tutor for the past 11 years and having helped hundreds of students to hit 700 plus on their SAT math, this is the exact order in which I would use these four resources and what I would do in each of these steps. That way I can be done with the SAT as quickly as possible and you can get a higher score on your next SAT. As always, guys, everything we talk about in this video, plus all the links we'll be using is going to be nicely organized into this PDF right here, over here, which you can download by clicking the link in the pinned comments. So the very first resource we're going to use, we're going to use it to set a strong foundation. And what I mean by that is we're first going to get you to become capable of solving every, if not most of the questions that are tested on the SAT. Because what's the point of using next three resources to do additional practices when you can't solve most of the questions? Is it not only a waste of your valuable time, but also a waste of limited resources. So if you're currently not scoring over 700, then drop all the practices, drop all the practice exams, and let's start with step one. And for you to become capable of solving every question, you first have to realize that there are 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. But what most students are overlooking is that it goes a little bit deeper. And here's what I mean. So for example, quadratics is one of the concepts that are tested on the SAT. And within quadratics, there are four things that SAT is going to test you on. It's going to be roots, vertex, forms, and discriminants. If you know four of these things, then you're going to be able to solve every single single quadratics questions, no matter how SAT twists it up. But let's say you're good with roots and vertex, but you're kind of still shaky on forms and discriminants. Then what's going to happen is every time these things show up on the SAT, you're going to end up missing them. And essentially, it's going to be the same process for every single one of these 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. What you see on the left side is literally everything and the only things that the SAT is going to test you on. And you want to master every bits and pieces of every single one of these 25 concepts. And on the right side, there's going to be a concept summary, which shows you exactly what you need to know for these topics and how the SAT is going to test you on these concepts. And for you to get this list, all you have to do is just simply click this link over here. It's going to take you to the download page. But before you start studying everything on that list, you first have to realize that you don't have to study everything because you're probably not bad at every single concept. You're probably good at some of them and you're probably bad at some of them. And even if you get better on what you're already good at, that's not going to raise your score because what's holding your score down is what you are weak on. So for you to raise your score as efficiently as possible, you simply want to identify what you're weak weaknesses are and simply focus on strengthening these things only. But the hard part is knowing exactly what I am weak on and what's holding my score down. And that's exactly where the analyzer comes in. Based on your performance, it's going to tell you, hey, you're good at these things, but you're terrible at these things. So get better at these things. It's going to create a list of things you need to work on. So in order for you to set the foundation as efficiently as possible, use the analyzer, identify what your weak concepts are, and focus on mastering them. By the end of it, if done correctly, you're going to become capable of solving every question. And now it's time for us to do some practices. And the best resources to do so is by using the old paper SATs without a time limit. And you might be wondering, John, why are we using using irrelevant old paper SATs. You see, after having looked at every single paper SAT from 2016 to 2023 and all the past digital SATs available, I can confidently tell you that 99% of the questions are essentially the same. They might have changed the wording of the questions and the exams have different time limits, but the questions themselves are still the same. Because at the end of the day, SAT essentially comes down to making the connection between the concept and the question. And whether it's the paper SAT or the digital SAT, it is still testing you on this same idea with the same types of questions. In order for you to strengthen this ability, it simply comes down to one, mastering the concepts as we talked about in the previous step, and two, doing a ton of practices using the old paper SATs. And for this step, you want to do it without a time limit and simply focus on getting the correct answer. After you have mastered the concepts, you're going to be able to solve these questions rather slowly. But the good news is, 
as you do a ton of practices, you're going to start to slowly pick up on these SATs question patterns and the speed is going to take care of itself. And speed is no longer going to be an issue. With my students, I teach them the question patterns while they're learning the concepts so that they can get to their target score faster, but you can still slowly pick up on these question patterns as you do a lot of these practice questions. And another resource is going to be the educator question bank. You see, as you do these practices, you're still going to get some questions wrong. And for example, if you get a line question wrong, you first want to go back to your lines concept notes and make sure you understood every parts of it. But more importantly, you want to focus on lines questions. Because remember, what's holding your score down is what you are bad at. So simply do more lines practice questions before you move on to the next set of practices. And that's where the question bank comes in. If you click this link over here, it's going to take you to a page that looks something like this. This is the educator question bank. And honestly, it's not the best, but it's a great resource provided by the college board because let me, let me just show you. So first you're going to pick SAT and you're going to pick math and you're going to click all four of these domains so you can get access to all the questions. If you click search and scroll down, there is difficulty and there is skill over here. And let's say you want to get additional set of lines questions, then just click linear functions. And it's going to show you 87 line questions that were tested on the SAT. So for example, let's say you're pretty bad at lines and you want to start off with easy questions, then just do that. And it's going to show you all the easy questions with one box difficulty. And as you get better, you want to go into medium difficulty and then it shows you all the medium ones and the hard ones like so. In the past, people just had to do a lot of practices, but now you can just pick your concept, pick the difficulty, and you can get access to these questions. And that's going to be the educator question bank. So in order for you to maximize accuracy, this is going to be the process right here. First, you're going to take a test without a time limit and you're going to grade it. And then you're going to identify what questions you have missed and what concepts you are weak on. And before you move on to the question bank, you first have to go back to the concept notes and make sure you understood that concept. And when you're ready, you're going to go to the question bank and do additional practice questions for that specific concept. And then you're going to simply repeat the cycle, take another test, and then go through the whole process all over again. Something I tell my students is that SAT is like filling a bucket of water. So let's say you have this cute little bucket and you're pouring water in. And the higher your water fills up, the higher your score is going to get. But the problem here is that you have these holes in your bucket. So even if you pour more water in, even if you take more practice exams, if you have these holes here, what's going to happen is before it gets too high, the water is going to start to seep out of these holes. Then no matter how much water you put in, no matter how many practice exams you take, water is going to continue to seep out and your score is just not going to go up. So the right thing to do is before you pour any more water in, you want to make sure you fill these holes. Whatever you are weak on, whatever your weak concepts are, make sure you get those taken care of first before you do additional practice exams. And now your bucket is going to fill up higher, but at some point there's going to be another hole where the water is seeping out from, another one that you didn't even know it existed. And don't worry, all you have to do is simply plug in these holes and keep pouring water in. And eventually you're going to be able to reach your target score. It's just that simple. And step one and two is all about plugging the holes in your bucket. And now once your bucket's in a good shape, it's time for us to move on to the next step and it's to find your speed. You see, if you have done step one and two correctly, you're going to be able to solve most of the SAT questions correctly. But the problem is that there is a time limit on the SAT and you not only have to solve these questions correctly, but also quickly. But there's a quick dilemma because if you raise your speed, what's going to happen is your accuracy is going to go down. You're going to end up making mistakes. You're going to solve them the wrong way and get more questions wrong. So in order for you to increase your accuracy, you kind of slow your speed down, kind of take more time on each question. And as a result, your accuracy is going to go up. But then you realize, oh, wait, I only did like 50% of the questions and my time is running out. And that's what I mean by finding your speed. You kind of have to play around with your speed and accuracy and find that sweet spot. And remember, you can't really do this if you are not getting most of the questions correctly. If you haven't done the past two steps correctly, this third step is going to feel like hell because no matter what you do, you're always going to miss questions and you're not going to be able to reach your target score. And for this step, we're going to be using the non-adaptive digital SATs. So what's different about these non-adaptive digital SATs is that they are actually on paper. However, the questions are more in line with the digital SAT and how the questions are worded and how they are meant to be solved is essentially identical to the questions you would see on the digital SAT. So these four practice exams are the next closest thing to the actual digital SAT. And overall, it's a good resource to use to find your speed. So the process for this step is pretty much similar to what you have done in the previous step, but you are going to review your speed. So for example, you're going to take the test, identify what you have missed. Yes, you're still going to miss questions at this step. Go back to the concept, do some practice questions, but at the same time,
time, also review your speed, review your performance. Was I going too fast or was I going too slow? How was my accuracy? Can I afford to slow down or should I speed up a little bit more? You kind of have to play around with different speed to find the one that is the best for you. And then you're going to simply repeat that process until you find the sweet spot. So once you have learned all the concepts, maximize your accuracy and found your speed, the next step and the last step is for you to find your exam strategy. And here we're going to simply use what's known as the blue book mock exam. You really want to save these four until the very end because this is the closest thing you will ever have to the actual digital SAT you're going to take on Saturday. And here you have four practice exams plus one PSAT and I recommend you taking all of them. And at this last step we have two goals. First is for you to get used to the exam environment. Essentially take it like the real thing. Make sure you have your pencil eraser, scratch paper, and you have your calculator ready. Even though there is decimals available inside the app, I highly recommend you bring a graphing or regular calculator with you because it's going to be much faster to plug into your calculator than to type it out into your computer. And another thing is going to be the Desmos usage. We already know Desmos is one of the big things that were added to the digital SAT, but based on my experience and research, I've come to the conclusion that Desmos is a very, very, very small part of the digital SAT. Vast majority of the questions are meant to be solved without it. And if you try to use Desmos for it, you're going to end up taking the long route and having to spend more time than you have to. On average for digital SAT, for both modules combined, you're going to have about zero to two questions that are meant to be solved with Desmos. Like you have to use Desmos for it. And the three types that you definitely know how to recognize, I organized it into this video right here. You can learn about them after finishing this video. And again, what you did in the past two steps still apply. You want to take the exam, find out what your holes are. You want to fill in your holes, do some additional practice questions, and also review your speed and play around with your speed. And there's a lot of uncertainty for the digital SAT, but what I can confidently tell you is that if the previous steps were done correctly, I 100% guarantee you that you will be scoring 700 plus. That's how I did it. And that's how my students have done it for the past 11 years. And that's how hundreds and hundreds of accelerators were able to go from four, five, 600 to 700 plus on their next SAT. So that's going to be it. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll see you on the next video.